Uh, greetings, my name is Kaisley Beiding Samoa, and I have the honor and privilege of serving as secretary to the Global Christian Forum. The Global Christian Forum brings together church leaders from all over the world to pray, to share faith stories, and to address issues of common concern. And we believe that we are in this pandemic, especially together as people who are in one global village and what affects one affects all. And so we are using this time together to listen to church leaders from different parts of the world, ask them how they are doing in their ministry, and also ask how, uh, what are the things that we can learn from them as together we try to be brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ around the world. And today I'm delighted to have as my guest, Bishop Kaiser from the Evangelical Lutheran Church of Finland. Uh, Bishop Kaiser, welcome. And would you be so kind as to introduce yourself uh, before we get into any questions? Yes, thank you, Kaisley, gladly. Um, my name is uh, Kaisa or Kaisa Mari Hintikka. I'm a bishop at the uh, Evangelical Lutheran Church of Finland in the um, Diocese of Espoo, which is part of the metropolitan or capital region in, in Finland. Um, the Evangelical Lutheran Church of Finland is the historical mainline church in Finland. Um, about 70% of the Finnish population, or those living in Finland, still belong to that church. Uh, but we also have very strong ecumenical connections with the Orthodox, with the uh, Catholic Church in Finland, with the um, uh, free churches in Finland as well. So I'm very happy to be here discussing with you, Kaisley, today. Our life and our world is all different now than it was about three, four months ago. How is ministry? How are you all doing ministry during this COVID pandemic period? Thank you, Kaisley. Um, I think it has been very interesting of course serious times that we are addressing I mean we are facing right now not just locally um, here in Finland but but globally as you say as well um, it has been a time very revealing time time revealing the things if I think about the evangelical Lutheran Church in Finland uh, revealing the things where we are strong but also revealing the things where we really need to go uh, grow stronger um i think well congregations particularly the the big question that we need to ask from ourselves and and that we have been asking during this particular uh, last two and a half months has been that um how how, how should we be as a church in the, the in the wider society should we make ourselves available during these very difficult and challenging times? Should we act responsibly, in a responsible way, that is closing the doors, keeping the physical distance, um, trying to find new ways to connect with the people? And I think that's somehow a combination of these two. We really needed to find new, way to, new ways to reach out for the people, the members of our congregations, but also those who are not part of the, the, the Lutheran Church in Finland. Um, and at the same time, personally, I have found it very important that we keep the church buildings open, even if our regular prayer life and the, um, the, the regular Sunday services have been closed, and then we have been streaming these out. So people have had an access to the local congregation to the worship through the, their internet access. But at the same time, in between those Sundays, we have actually kept the church buildings open for, for silent prayer, for, for counseling, for people just to, to know that the church is open. Even if you don't go there, an open church is a signal, as strong as a closed church as well. And that's, we have found very important to give that signal that the church is open. We don't, as long as that there are people working in the hospitals, in the grocery stores, bus drivers, we are also available and we are there. I like it that you said the pandemic revealed the strengths of the church, as well as areas that you need to grow. And, and we can all do more with more partnerships and relationships. How, how, have you, how are you doing with that with other churches uh, in Finland? I think it has been quite, if I think a bit wider cooperation with the churches, I think probably quite typical for the pandemic situation has been that 
when we kind of the, the first shock is that you you are concerned about your beloved ones, your immediate family and friends and and um, your colleagues and and then you start working with your own congregation, your own diocese, and so forth. But I think the risk with the pandemic has been that we have been so much concentrating on what is local and what is immediate mm -hmm. um, that one really needs to try and re remind oneself and, and, and the others about the co global communion and the global community. And I think this has been quite a big challenge in Finland. Whereas the ecumenical cooperation and cooperation with other churches and other religions in Finland as well I'd say it had been, has been rather good. The, the church leaders and the religious leaders in Finland have been giving out signals uh, for people, for, for, the, for the whole society during the, the pandemic. And of course, what we have wanted to do is encouraging words and thanks for the people who have been working so much for the local diakonia, uh, with the local other communities to support those who have been isolated in their homes, uh, families with their small children and, and um, all this kind of work. So it has been both encouraging and saying thank you for those who are really working for the best of the whole society. And what has been very important has been the, the joint calls for prayer. I mean, we have had these global prayers, like Pope Francis calling different leaders, people of different faiths for, for joint prayer. But also we have had this kind of local cause for prayer for people to remember that even if we don't we are not all in a position that we can physically support someone or physically help someone but we can all pray and through that we can help one another and, and the whole community mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. well thank you so these are some of the lessons you have learned and uh, uh, how uh, are these lessons going to outlast this pandemic? I'm sure areas of cooperation with other churches definitely will go on, but what other lessons have you learned about faith and about the people that you serve? I'd say that um, the lessons we've learned is that faith matters and, and the church matters. Churches together matter for the, for the wider, wider society. We've heard voices from um, coming from surprising, somewhat surprising directions, saying that we want to see the churches working together. We want to see the church leaders speaking out, speaking about hope, mm -hmm. speaking for life in during these this threatening um, times that we've been uh, witnessing together. Um, but of course, then there are many other things that we may not yet know what we have learned during this time and that's why i think it's enormously important that we don't just wait for all of this that all this is over but we also try to pay attention to the small things that we have learned during these times and they might be quite practical things how to arrange the the, the life in our congregations i mean quite a good strong example is that many of the congregations needed to go online. They've never been streaming their, their worships and now more or less all the, the local congregations are doing that. But there are other things as well. I mean, about communication. I mean, during crisis time, communication is enormously important. And these are the things that you really need to pay attention to and think carefully while these, we are still witnessing these, these uh, exceptional times, that what should we learn about communication? What should we learn about uh, relationships, cooperation between the churches, but also the, how we organize our lives within a church? And these are the things that we've, we're trying to name these, these things now that we have learned as, and slowly, bit by bit, uh, trying to build on that and, and make sure that the valuable fruits that we also have from these times of pandemic that we can we can share those fruits in the future as well and 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 uh, learn what we have learned i mean don't, let's not forget what we have learned during these times mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you've also reached out to some people in your community that you would call vulnerable uh, i'm sure there are people who either financially or age demographics might how have you done that as a church well, you see, the Evangelical Lutheran Church of Finland, every, every congregation by the church law has to have a ministry of diakonia. 
So that's part of our regular church life. We don't have Diakonia institution, institutions outside the church, but that is, that is a part of your everyday parish life. I um, mean, surely they, in every congregation, they needed to reorganize their work. We, in the biggest congregations, we have more than 10 people working for just for the Diakonia, whether they're pastors or, or, um, or other people. But um, what has been new is to how we can organize that, that work and how can we reach out for those people who would normally um, be more proactive and connect with the diaconia. But now you really need to find out who are the most vulnerable ones. I mean, of course, that is part of the work during the normal times as well. Mm -hmm. But I think that has been one of the strong parts. And then also finding new ways how to support young people how to support uh, family with small children, families with uh, small children, because we know that this time of isolate, physical isolation mm -hmm. hasn't been an uh, easy time for all the families. I mean, we know about figures that the uh, domestic violence, for example, which is traditionally strong in Finland, unfortunately, but it probably has been growing even stronger during mm -hmm. these times. And now we need to make sure that we can give all the support possible for these families and for these young children so that they they don't have to carry all these their experiences during the pandemic time uh, further in their life as well but we can give them as early support as, as possible yeah yeah just um just an interpretation i have come to realize not everybody uses the term diakonia uh, diakonia, what you mean by it is the service that you render to other people who are outside of the church or whether it is called missions or outreach or the compassion ministry that you have to other people. Well, I mean, the diakonia is, I mean, it, it, this is, it, one could call it a social support, but it's not just outside the church. It's for, but not only just for, for those who are members in the parish, it's, it's for everybody. We don't actually ask what is the religious background of a person if he or she asks for support from from diakonia mm -hmm. um, the the role of diakonia in, in finnish society at the wider sense somehow has turned to be something where we support those who fall through the the network of a welfare society which we are in in the nordics i mean we have strong tradition of a welfare society where through the taxation we build this kind of social um, structures for the whole society that we can support the most vulnerable ones but they are always those who somehow are so or who are marginalized in a way that the wider society so society don't have necessarily an access or doesn't see these people and that's the very important role of the diaconia or the service of the church is to find those who who have no access to any other support and, and empower them also to find the ways to back to the from the margins back to the wider society. So it's not just about the concrete support, but it's very much about ad advocacy as well. Thank you, thank you. I'm glad I asked that question because you have given us a lot uh, as to what the ministry is. But uh, how are you all thinking through your post-pandemic ministry? Um, uh, we don't want to rush to, to that time, but I'm sure there are some lessons that you're all thinking about as you think of the time when it's not so severe. Well, I mean, as I already say, I think we are now at the phase where we need to identify the things that we have already learned um, at this time. Um, I mean, surely reaching out for, for those people that we probably haven't been able to, to connect before the pandemic. I mean, pandemic, we've learned that there are actually more people joining the, the streamed uh, Sunday services online that we actually never had coming physically to the church before the pandemic. So how can we, I mean, can we continue that kind of service for the people, even if we physically gather uh, into the church buildings again and that is actually now last sunday yesterday was the first day when that was again possible at least for the meantime possible in finland but how can we continue serving also for the, those people who for for some reason doesn't want to come to the <laughs> into the church building to for, for sunday services but who are willing to 
to join the services online. So we need to keep that in mind as well. Mm -hmm. And also when it comes to the, the service of the church, the diaconia, how, how do we advocate for those who have been suffering during this time the most so that they don't come, become the ones who need to continually continue to suffer the most also in the pan post pandemic society because i mean all the expenses i mean the financial expenses of, of these times of course we we need to learn a way to build the society after all these and we have to make sure that the the most vulnerable ones are not the ones who need to pay that price of the whole pandemics and i'm not now speaking only about financial price but the, the price in the quality of life in their the, um, ownership for the society and for the shared processes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and of course, there are people also, I mean, when it comes to the, um, to the talking about the experience of people, I mean, we know that there are those who really find the situation so scary that even if they could otherwise, they are not willing or able to leave their homes or go where the other people are. Mm -hmm. So how do we kind of create this kind of trust and hope and the kind of the understanding that um, even if this is a, a huge shift in the life of the whole global society, in the life of, of the whole earth, yet there is God who is the creator of all this and who holds all this on God's hands and uh, who see the, the wider um, the wider span of everything that we have been experiencing. We can see just tiny little bits here, mm -hmm. but God has the whole um, map <laughs> of, of what has happened to us now in under God's eyes. And I think that is an important message for people, that there is some someone who is even bigger and stronger than these pandemics that we are witnessing right now. That is, that, is, that is true, and uh, thank you for those inspiring words. God is bigger and stronger than this pandemic, and uh, we need to inspire and engender more hope and trust, even as we go through this, this difficult time. I am so excited. I think uh, one of the gifts you have given us is the fact that you are all reflecting on what, is this, what does this period mean for us in ministry, and what are the things that we need to learn. And I think that's, that's something that everybody anywhere in the world can do that. Reflect on what this period is. Don't just rush to the next thing. Just reflect on what are the things that we have learned and how can we do, how can we do church better? How can we do ministry better? How can we do diaconia better? Whatever it is as we go to the next. Thank you very much. I know you are a very busy person. Have a wonderful, uh, wonderful rest of the day and of the week. Thank you for talking to us. Thank you, Casely. Thank you. God bless you. Bye.